Hello. Happy Homebrew Wednesday. I thought I'd try my luck. Same beer, of course, and I got to there and it kicked. Cheers. Now I've just been watching uh, a homebrew video from Brew a bit Rick Shaw and uh, he's just put one up there over on his channel about the uh, salted caramel um, stout, chocolate stout or whatever and absolutely it got me going for a dark beer and I knew I really only had scrapings in the barrel here. Um, I've also got uh, the Roland Schumacher a Dusseldorf Alt, Bleisbrück Brewery version of a, a original Alt beer from Dusseldorf, and that went into the keg. And you've seen bits of it about being being, being brewed in that. And uh, yeah, that went into the keg. And it's early days, but it seems nice. But I'm, I'll show you a little bit uh, of it. Oh, when I finish this really. But that's still a fantastic porter. Wouldn't mind after watching uh, Rick's video, and I saw that uh, originally it was one of uh, Hapless's uh, creations, etc. I, I just, as I said, the, the, the inside of my mouth was starting to melt, and I thought, oh, I've got to have a crack at that. So you've inspired me, Rick. I will go and have a crack at that. And I must look up the recipe. I believe it's one of, uh, on, on one of Hapless's uh, videos. Uh, perhaps if you watch this, you can let me know where to find the recipe for it. Or perhaps you could be kind enough to send me the recipe. But I definitely want to get that on and brew that shortly. Well, how's everybody doing with regards to this lockdown? It is Wednesday today when I'm doing this. And uh, I was just looking at the, the numbers on the screen as you do. Um, it's about what's on. It's um, about 6.30 now p.m. And uh, a lot of people have uh, left us today so that's not so good at all. I don't know when it's going to start dipping and you know but one thing's for sure we're certainly not going to be out of lockdown in the next week or two that's for sure I would imagine it's going to go on for quite another few months so if I start making that chocolate then uh, not chocolate but if I start making that salted caramel stout then that'll get me through um, some of some of the harsher times. Well, that's gone down quick. I know it wasn't a full pint, but so today has been a beautiful day. Wednesday, the eighth of April, and I've been um, cutting the lawn. I'm just looking out there because over that direction, through the kitchen window, I can see my. Uh, garden, back garden, and uh, so I cut the grass today and uh, did some bits and bobs, tidied up around generally, and I uh, got a chance to sit in the garden for an hour or so. Oh, hang on, not much left in there. I'll have to go and pop and uh, excuse me, I'll, I'll put the uh, the Schumacher out in there or in another glass. Back shortly. There we go, that didn't take long. Now I've just committed German Harry Carey, a real faux pas because I'm using the Frohe Kirsch glass, although it is a German beer. Um, of course you wouldn't 
have uh, out in the curl to pass. Although they do come in stands occasionally. Just hang on, the dog's annoying me. So here's the one that's uh, kicking the door and causing all the aggro. Oh yeah. This is Twinkle. You're a villain, are you? No? You're a villain. So yes. So yeah, as I was saying, then obviously you wouldn't get it in the fruit curse class. But you do get them in stangs and um, but most often you'd certainly get out in um, a slightly rounder glass, squatter, a bit of a wider diameter on it, etc. I need to get an alt glass. I used to have, well, I had a couple for years. I had hand and alt, and uh, what else was there? Anyway, there was a few. But I, I kind of like the, to get the original glasses and the correct styles of glasses for the correct styles of beers and things bit of a nerd like that but uh, yeah so this is a through one but it's a I don't know if you can see on there it's a um, it's a half pint glass half pint version and uh, normally the 0.2 uh, when the surface the curved glasses but anyway until I get a curved glass uh, um, an alt glass because I've looked around a couple of places I had a word with Clive Silas and uh, he put me on obviously with his place, but the prices of them were absolutely crazy uh, at the moment. I just don't have that spare cash at the moment, uh, like most of us. So uh, it's going to have to go under there. Anyway, you can have a look. It's uh, I don't know. I can see through this. It's uh, it's almost like a rubyish colour. So it's a bit like a ruby beer, and it has um, a white head on it. And it takes me back, oh, I was in the Germany in the summer visiting Roland and uh, some friends. Um, but it takes me back to when I was in Zolingen in, as a child, about 15 year old, spent the time there, went to school there, etc. And, and I was drinking the Alt in Tilbury, uh, it was a, our local pub there. And uh, it's now changed its name and uh, nowhere near as good as it was when I was 15. Maybe because it was a little bit illicit then. But yeah, but it's, uh, it's clear. It's been in the barrel about four days now. Prost. You know, it's even better than I thought. It's not highly carved, and the originals are not overly carved, unless you get them in the bottles. The bottles tend to be, but the draft isn't. But that's uh, that's spot on. You see, it's the head just keeps coming back. That's a good Dusseldorf ad. Definitely. Okay, so I've bored you enough, I think. Um, I haven't got really got anything else to share with you other than, as I say, if you fancy doing one of those salted caramel stouts, then go over and have a look at uh, Rick uh, Rick's channel and uh, brew a bit Rick Shaw. He's only got 153 subscribers at the moment, so you know, drop across there if you like what you see, subscribe to him, get his numbers up a bit. So let's say he was only got 285 subscribers, so I, I'd like some more as well as possible. Anyway, that's where we are, and uh, yeah, we'll see you on the next video, and perhaps uh, I'll be able to tell you about the. Uh, Hobgoblin, you've seen some little bits about it, but the Hobgoblin that I'm brewing is sitting across from me now and it's just about ready, I think, 
to cold crush, perhaps, perhaps another four or five days and then we'll cold crush that and then that will be ready and then I really think this weekend I'm going to have to get that salted caramel. We'll see you next week. Bye. Hello. Happy Homebrew Wednesday. Well, here we are today. The uh, water is on behind me for the start of the Roland Schumacher Alt Brew Day. Now, quick story about this. Um, many, many years ago, I spent time in Zollingen, which is a place in Germany and um, I went to school there for a bit and made a very very good friend whilst I was there a guy called Roland Schumacher like myself he went into the police force he went to the German police force and I went into uh, West York's Met Police and uh, yeah well he's now retired and uh, I stayed in the police force for a number of years and then went into teaching as some of you know and uh, Roland and I have kept in touch all these years since 1976-77 and uh, still remain good friends. Last summer, I, uh, when I was diagnosed initially with my illness, I decided I wanted to go back to Zollingen and have a wander around, see the old places. So I went over, stayed with Roland and uh, we had a few beers, etc. Hello, I had a few beers. You may have seen, excuse my fingers, you may have seen the um, some of the footage uh, that I did last year with regards to the Kirsch, etc. And uh, yeah, but our favourites, the first ones we started drinking back in 1977 was um, Alt. And uh, we used to go to a pub called Tilbury and uh, I used to drink Hannin Alt or Alt Schoss, which was a slightly different version. But I certainly loved the Alt beers, and I think the fact that I was 15 and uh, being able to drink and get away with it um, was an amazing thing. So yeah, so I was there back in the summer and I had some, uh, some Alt again, really enjoyed it. And uh, Roland told me that there is actually uh, a brand of Alt called Schumacher. Um, made in Dusseldorf, of course, which is where the Alt origin comes from. So I thought, well, let's have a go with that. I'll put a recipe together and uh, that's what I've done. And uh, yeah, so we're, gonna, we're naming it the Roland Schumacher Alt. And uh, let's hope the brew day goes to plan. Here's the grist for the Schumacher Alt. And uh, we've got Eunuch malt in here, we have Pilsner malt and we have some Carafa special in there. I can smell the Carafa actually, I've only just put that in so yeah. Right so there's 12 litres in there of um, 73 degree water and I'm going to put the grist into there and stir it through right that's us mashed in and the temperature is 66 degrees centigrade we're going to leave it now and I'm going to uh, mash it for uh, an hour
making some wine and water. So we've uh, had the mash now. I mashed for uh, 75 minutes, an hour and 15 instead of the hour I said I was going to. Um, that's because I hadn't uh, read my recipe correctly. Um, I just checked it off and thought, oh, it's better to go for the uh, 75. So I've been ball offing here. So it involves running off the wort and um, running off the wort and then, uh, yeah, till it gets nice and clear, or at least all the bits are and everything are out. And then we pour it back in to the mash tun which of course settles down the grain bread and uh, I'm going to do the first runnings now whenever I do this uh, usually somebody comments either on the, on the videos or privately it sounds like I'm having a wee I assure you I'm not so I'm going to run that off for now and as that drops down throughout I will uh, then start ladling the water which is at 77 degrees. This is the uh, sparging and then uh, hopefully I will get to my volume which I'm hoping is going to be round about the 27 litre mark which will then go into the boiler. I wish you could smell the malty goodness that's coming up off this. Fantastic on the nose. So we're now sparging. And I like to keep probably about six or seven centimetres, maybe a little bit more, just over the top constantly. So we're there, it's um I'm just checking on the side there. I've got almost 28 litres there. I've checked my numbers and the pre-boiled gravity should be uh, 1039 and it's absolutely spot on. That's the pre-boiled gravity. Okay, so let's get this sucker into the uh, brew kettle. Okay, so there's the oil that's in from the um, yeah, the bucket, and as I said, it's spot on, pre-boil gravity 10.39, and uh, we've got about 28 and a half litres in there. Okay, so uh, we've got the hops weighed out, we've got um, magnum, and spalt, and spalt, protoflock, and some... Um, and now we're just coming up to the boil. Let me just check. I think we were about 99 before. I'm just using one of my many thermometers. You can never have enough because they always break. Of course, I do have the, uh, the ink bird thermometer as well that's 102.2 so it's there or thereabouts and you can just see the uh, hot brick coming through there now let's see how it progresses just having a live spirit brewery uh, porter Whilst waiting, 
and uh, I know technically you just have boiling point but uh, I'll let you get a good rolling boil going before I call the boil. We'll give it a minute or so before adding the pickering hops, which is the magnum. So that's the boil achieved on the Holland Schumacher Alt beer. It's a shame you don't drink any more Roland, I understand why, but I think this is going to be a cracking beer. And whilst I'm making this alt beer, um, I'd just like to raise a glass to Jim Payne. I know I'm a couple of days late, um, but I think of you often, Jim. Gone but not forgotten. God bless you. So there's the bittering hop going in. Now we've just come to the boil. And we'll uh, give it a stir if I can find my paddle. And you can see that's disintegrated very quickly. When I'm using pellet tops, I don't mind just putting them straight in. Obviously, when I come to put the other hops in later on, we'll see that um, I'm using a hop spider. just to keep all the leaf hops out. If I put the leaf hops in there, which would be the best, because obviously you would get the isomerization of the, um, of the, all the essential oils, etc. But unfortunately, I'd never be able to run the beer out of the kettle. So that's why we use the hop spider, as you'll see later on. So, that's the first part of the hops gone in for the bittering, which is the magnum. So we will, we're going to do an hour's boil. Next time I see you is when we put in the first of the spalt. Okay, so here's the second order hops going in after the bittering hops. Oops, sorry about it getting a bit steamy there. That's at 20 minutes. And that is the spalt. And there's about 30. 30 grams of leaf hops going in there, the spout leaf hops. Um, they've got a bit of age to them, these, so we'll not worry too much about it being slightly over what I predicted and what B.S. Smith predicted. I needed 27 grams, but I thought, well, whatever. They need to be used anyway. Let's give that a go. Okay, so we've got protoflock. It was going to be probably about just short of a full one anyway, so I decided to put a full one in. And uh, steam. And uh, yep, yeah, some yeast nutrient. Love the fact that the only chemicals that go into my beers are uh, things like yeast nutrients and protoflock. Everything else completely natural. Well, 
last couple of minutes of the boil and the rest of the spalt going in. Got a two litre starter of the uh, Dusseldorf Ale. Had it going for about three days now and I've just spun it up again. The reason I want everything in suspension is I'm going to put some of it into um, a sterilised bottle because I'm going to jar at the moment and uh, I'll use that to start off another ale. So I'll get that out. There we go. That was star sun in there and what I'm going to do is I'm going to decant some of this into here. Everything has been sterilized, star sand. Yes, I am still using star sand. So that should be enough in there. To set us off. Now, I've just opened the cube as you've seen. I have sprayed it before, but I'll be leaving it on just while I'm waiting. I would imagine you're thinking, why am I going to sterilise that? Well, the stir bar is in there and I haven't brought another magnet with me to take it out, so we'll just pour it in there. Just see it through. First things first then, we just Rinse that. Here we go. Let's get it in there. This is heavy. <laughs> Okay, there we go. How much have we got in there? Well, the cone to that is 22 litres in there, but of course, there's a huge lot to come down. I'm expecting about 25 litres. Let me just do a quick test. 
because obviously I want to see what the starting gravity is going to be. There's a hundred there. Ten forty. I mean, at ten forty six, ten forty six. Starting. Ten forty six starting. And then I've splashed the load on ten forty six starting. Here we go. Um, decant it off but I don't I don't see why I'm getting another couple of litres free beer almost there we go that's that in and that's going to bring us up to 25 litres definitely which is great well Pull it on. That's us for now.